We started our journey in 2001. We wanted to work smarter. We wanted to entrench uh, continuous improvement in everything that we did in teaching and learning, but also in administration, just the general operations of the school. We, when we started uh, talking about quality, there was a lot of resonance with some members of our parent community and the school council, and with a number of our staff members who'd heard about this in other schools and other, other workplace settings. Uh, we had people who'd gone down the quality path come and talk to us, um, professionals, but also uh, other schools and people within schools. We had teachers go and look at other schools that had uh, been involved in this program as well. We also had presentations at our staff meeting and we had the opportunity to discuss it and come up with um, a consensus on it. Staff needed to be reassured that the cost of going into this program wouldn't really impact on their other budgets and we were able to meet that challenge. Then we called for expressions of interest to form a core team. The core team ended up being largely the leadership team, which at the time I didn't know that that was going to be the best way, but as it turned out, it meant that when we presented stuff to the staff, that it had a lot of resonance because it was clearly an important uh, development in what we were doing at our school. The core team over two years did uh, quite a lot of professional development uh, with an outside agency and we met other schools that were going down the same quality path as us and we drew strength from them and we learnt from each other. When we started our training we were encouraged to identify uh, opportunities for improvement and we started with some that were not that successful because we were trying to do too much at once. We learnt pretty quickly that we needed to work on issues that were quite contained but of high impact and would have a lot of resonance with our staff. When we identified those opportunities for improvement and started the PDSA process, we were very keen to always draw in other staff members that weren't on the core team so that while we were making an improvement, we were also training other staff in the process of um, going through those PDSA uh, steps. Running parallel with the work on the PSA, we also developed our school mission and our vision and our school values. Now they have been very powerful uh, items to document and they've really had um, a high impact in terms of defining our school culture. They underpin our behaviour management but they also underpin the, beh the behaviours that staff have with the community and the expectations of how the community works with the school and how we all work with our students. Initially when we started we worked with the staff to prioritise what were the identified opportunities for improvement. In retrospect it really doesn't matter where you start as long as people are keen to work on particular items and that worked very well for us. When we identified an opportunity for improvement, then we called for expressions of interest to be on the team. So by and large, we were dealing with people who were volunteers, who wanted to be part of the process, and that worked very well. At each step of the way, we reflected back with the whole staff about what we were doing and why we were doing it and used them to collect the data. The decisions we made ended up having a lot of resonance and were quickly adopted. After some period of time, when we'd been down this process a number of times, we found that we had a lot of documents that we needed to organise and we really started working on capturing the memory so that we were standardising the improvement and that that material was available to everyone in the school.